project for the second half of his academic year was centred around a response to the Ken Stradling collection in Bristol. The gallery houses pieces incidentally collected by Ken and is mostly made up of mid-century ceramics, glass and furniture acquired during his time as the buyer for the Bristol Guild. The project had a particular significance for me. I am Bristol born and raised and was introduced to the collection while studying my foundation diploma at Bristol School of Art. I went on to steward in the gallery for around a year after my foundation diploma and so I already had a knowledge of the pieces in the collection when the project began. When we visited the gallery, I actively tried to avoid picking up a leech piece to study and respond to. I think I resent or am in denial about the fact that my work seems to lean towards that tradition. I was drawn particularly to a David Leach bottle nevertheless, a flagon which had been thrown and altered with an overhead handle. It was a wood-fired and I presume unglazed form from the Machelny pottery in Somerset. Having been experimenting with bottle shapes already, and having signed up to volunteer at a fire ring for Oxford Anagama Kiln Project, where I could fire some of my own pots, I decided I would make two sets of bottle forms with accompanying cups. The first set would be gas fired at the university, and the second set would be wood fired in Oxford.
It is worth mentioning that the majority of this project took place within the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. I was unable to carry out any firings before the closure of the university, and so all of my initial plans and glaze testing have been put on hold. forms for gas firing were to be closer in appearance to the David Leach flagon from the collection, thrown using a mix of white St Thomas clay and a sand buff stoneware. Although the form in the collection had been wood-fired, the nature of the anagamma firing that I was to attend would be much harsher than the atmosphere in the three-chambered kiln used at Machelny. It is highly unlikely that the overhead handle would have survived. Gas firing would mean that I could get away with a less robust form. In reflection of this, I chose to pair the flagons with goblets thrown in two parts. For the wood-fired forms, I chose to use the Reduction St Thomas clay from pot clays, using it to make narrow bottles which would be accompanied by simple cups. In hindsight, I should have used the clays the opposite way around. Reduction St Thomas is much less grogged than the clay mix I used for the gas fires forms, which would have been more suited to an anagamma atmosphere. Even before the university closure, I had known I wanted to raw glaze the pieces for wood firing for ease of transport to the Oxford kiln site.
This was thankfully something I could still do from home, and already had an ash glaze recipe that I had evidence would work. I had wanted to make the glaze, and thus the pots, more site-specific. Ken bought his first piece for the collection, an Elton Ware vase, at the age of 16 in 1938, from an auction in Old Brickcourt Mansion. The mansion house has since been demolished, but sat within Old Brickwater Estate, an area of now public parkland within walking distance of my childhood home. I wanted to incorporate some of this location into my work because of the connection to Ken's journey and to myself. I collected fallen wood to burn for ash and red clay from the river to use as glaze material. With this, I would line the insides of the bottles to be wood fired. While it is a shame that my intentions for glazing and firing have been put on hold, along with any plans to exhibit our responses at the collection, I am thankful that these are some of my biggest concerns right now. I intend to hold on to this body of work until the time comes that I can fire again whenever that may be.